Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Michael James, and um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about break, breakthrough solutions with act, action learning. Um, and you can see I have a quote up here. For those of you who can't read it, it says, be patient towards all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. This comes from this Spanish poet named Rilke. And uh, it's actually a book called Letters to a Young Poet. He was conversing with this young poet in Germany. And uh, it became a book. And I love this idea. So when I started studying an action learning group, um, it jumped out on me that the action learning group also teaches to love the questions. So that was a great thing. <clears throat> and so here's what we're going to do. Um, and this is sort of our learning objective today. Uh, utilizing components of action learning, participants will be able to identify two benefits of asking questions in a problem-solving group. So we'll get two down before we're done here, okay? Um, and ultimately what we're saying is that questions are better than answers. We've heard this theme before, right? So, is, yes? Are you with me? Yes. yes. All right. yes. A little, little amen now. Amen. <laughs> so before we go further, um, and I'm sorry if I'm in your way there. No, uh, before we go further, just a little bit about what an action learning group is. Um, this is a group that would be assembled to solve a problem in an organization. I think we've heard previously that there's going to be a finite timeline for the group's existence. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that somewhere between four and eight people with an ideal of five to six is going to get together and solve it and there's a lot of information around you know what are the right people for the group and all that we're just going to focus on this questioning aspect today <coughs> so what i'd like to do is start off with some answers here um, and i want to pose a hypothetical and i gave you all a little index card with the number one on it <coughs> if you would imagine with me that you are in a training department that shouldn't be too difficult right and your training department is stagnant it's, um, you don't feel a certain sense of personal development there. Uh, training doesn't feel dynamic. It doesn't feel like you're adding value to the organization. Materials and curricula seem old. On that card that you have, go ahead and write down what you think the reason is. What is, what is the primary reason that all of this is the case? I'll give you about 30 or 40 seconds. like most of you have gotten a little something written down anyway. What did you come up with? What's the what's the problem? Answer. Sometimes trainers aren't trained themselves. Mm -hmm. They may have been trained when they first started, but now we don't send them anywhere. They just have to figure it out on their own. So well, well set up I for have failure. to disagree. I disagree with the Tangie because I've done research on it and I don't think what she's saying is accurate. Okay, well so I would say that there's always going to be outliers where you're going to be right as well. I think Tangie's onto something as well, though. Um, and could you just repeat it for us, Tanji? Trainers aren't trained themselves. They're not sent to training. They, yes. they, they were trained when they first started, and now it's just, OK, you're done. Go on. So that feels like being set up for failure. And I've been there. I don't know if anybody else has been mm -hmm. there. So I totally get that one. What other thing might there be? If I could get one more example. No management involvement. So not that support, sponsorship. Um, it's helpful if you have that third-party authority to help sell an idea, right? Mm -hmm. All right, good. What's almost more interesting about this is that <clears throat> you get into this situation, and if you assemble a group, oftentimes, when you first say, here's the problem, here's the thing we're going to get together on, people have answers. They feel like they already know what it is. It's just natural human stuff. So I think you guys can probably relate to it, hopefully, from us talking about that a little bit, what we do is we jump to conclusions a little bit. <clears throat> so in an action learning group, what's done is there's a couple of ground rules. One is you can't make a statement unless it's in response to a question. So again, love the questions, value the questions more than the answers. Um, then there's a, another rule about a coach intervening and kind of directing that, enforcing those rules, which is important as well. <clears throat> Let's think about questions for a second. 
you've got another card there in front of you, um, but it's a group card, so there's a two on it at each table. Uh, let me give you another, you know, 45, 50 seconds here. See if you can write down as many questions as you could come up with that go back to our hypothetical. You're in this dull draft training department. What questions you, would you want to ask if you were put on this action learning group to solve what's going on? What questions would come to mind? You picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, what, are there any other resources that we can use or have? Okay. Any outside? What, what can we do to, you know, to make, uh, we're, we're talking about the actual training. What can, so if you know, feel growth. What can we do to grow? Develop our department. And how much um, leadership buy-in do we is the is give for this department? Let's maybe a little bit about how we're gonna solve it. Then how did we get here? Right. Those are the questions you oh, start with, I'm, right? Yeah. How, how did they get? How did they find us? Have some questions? Let me hear some examples. Who will share a question with me? Oh, in keeping with what we learned in question matching, how do we hire Sardine to come fix this? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Dan, what do you have? You but, uh, what does new learning need to look like for our learners? Yeah, okay. So we know where we're at. Um, what, what, what's the ideal? What are we looking for, right? You guys have one over there? <coughs> what are our resources? Do we have inside resources that can help us? Do we have money to get outside resources or send them yep. to training? Yeah. So my, my hope really is that, I mean, that's a great question, by the way. My, my hope at this point is that maybe you've had a little bit of an aha moment. Do, does it make sense to you that when you get in that group, people are naturally going to go, oh, I'm not <coughs> yes. Right? But if we stop and slow down, which is sort of of the values of an action learning group, we can we can uh, we can consider it more carefully, right? So here here's a question: um, What was beneficial about asking the questions? I was kind of answering it there, but <laughs> what jumps out at you? Anything? We have to examine what really is going on. Mm. Okay. You may have also, you think, exactly. and not you assume may, we knew the answer. Yeah, you may jump to like assumptions about what it is rather than actually understanding what the real problem is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it keeps you from jumping to the solution base and getting you to start thinking about what the real problems are. We all want to be problem solvers, so we can't be there for us that. All right. That's a good one. What I would say is that um, we uncovered several. But here's two, because we talked about two at the outset, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a couple of good ones. It makes you think, gives you some time to con consider, be a little careful, and you can find the real problem, rather than maybe the superficial, the most obvious one. Okay? Did we accomplish our objective? Yeah. Yes. yeah. What questions do you have for me? Yeah, we're good? Thank you very much. Okay.